Welcome to By Faith, our current Elder Conversation podcast series where we walk through the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11. I'm Laura, your host. Hebrews 11 gives us a list of examples, a cloud of witnesses that exemplify faithful obedience. Each week, one of our teaching pastors will take one of the people mentioned in the chapter and tell us what is their story, why is their faith exemplary, and what should we today learn and take away from their faith. Over the past weeks, we've learned from the faith of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. If you've missed any of our previous Elder Conversations on the lives of these people and others from Hebrews 11, you can find those online at tcbchurch.org elders or wherever you listen to podcasts. This week, we turn our attention to Joseph. Hebrews 11 verse 22 says, By faith Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. So who is Joseph? What is his story? And why is his faith exemplary? What should we learn from it? Hey everyone, this week at By Faith, we get to look at the story of Joseph. And so just chasing those same questions. Who is Joseph? What is his story? Why is his faith exemplary? What what can we take away from it? So who is Joseph? Joseph is one of the sons of Jacob. So Jacob's one of the patriarchs. We talked about Abraham, who had Isaac, who had Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Joseph was number 11 in that list. Uh, and as you go through Joseph's story, uh, you see this picture of God's providence. So of the 11 sons that, that Jacob had, Joseph was his favorite. And that becomes a problem for Joseph because his brothers didn't like him for it. Uh, not only did they not like him for it, he had this dream where there were 10 other stalks of grain bowing down to him. And there's this dream where the sun, the moon, the stars were bowing down to him. And it's a picture that one day his brothers, his mother and father, were going to bow down to him. So as you can guess, that didn't make him very popular. Uh, also, his father made him a coat of many colors. So we assume this is a very extravagant, nice gift given only to Joseph. And so his brothers grew to hate him. And so as the story goes that you can find uh, in Genesis, the last 15 uh, chapters or so, we begin to see uh, God's work in and through Joseph's life, not just for Joseph, but for God's family. And so Joseph's brothers are out, they're with sheep, they're shepherds, they're taking care of their sheep. Jacob sends Joseph to go visit them. As he's coming to them, they decide they're going to kill him. Uh, By God's providence, one of the brothers stops that from happening. They throw him in a pit instead. And uh, this brother's plan is to free Joseph when they're not looking. Uh, But while he's away, they decide to sell him into slavery. So that's what happened. Joseph gets sold into slavery to Egypt. Uh, They take his coat. They dip it in blood. They send it back to their father Jacob and say, hey, Joseph's dead. And so Jacob goes into mourning for having lost his son. And so the 12th son is born in that time frame as well, named Benjamin. Uh, So all the sons with Jacob except for Joseph, who's been sold into slavery. Uh, Joseph finds favor in Potiphar's house. This is where he's serving, kind of rises up the ranks. But then things go bad again because Potiphar's wife decides that she wants to make advances on Joseph. Joseph operates in integrity, rejects those advances, and so Potiphar's wife lies about him, accuses him of taking advantage of her. And so he is thrown in prison. So he's gone from bad to worse. In prison, uh, he begins to continue to trust God, rise up the ranks there, and there's a point where he's able to interpret the dreams of two prisoners. That one, the dream means he's going to die, the other means he's going to live. That's what happens. The one who lives says he's going to go tell uh, Pharaoh and others about Joseph, and he doesn't. So Joseph just continues in prison. What's going on? He's faithful, and life keeps getting worse for him, which is a good lesson for us. But there comes a point when Pharaoh uh, has a dream, he needs it interpreted, and the man who uh, had received the interpretation from Joseph remembers Joseph, tells Pharaoh about him. So Pharaoh calls for Joseph. Joseph comes, interprets this dream. And in this dream, there are uh, pictures that represent seven years of harvest that are going to come on the land, and then seven years of famine. And so Pharaoh asks Joseph what he should do. And Joseph says, during these years of plenty harvest, you should accumulate as much grain as you can. Save it for the years of famine so that your nation, your people will live. Pharaoh sees the wisdom of this and makes Joseph second in command. And so after decades of being falsely accused, pit, 
to prison. Now he is one of the most powerful men in Egypt. And so they do exactly what he says. They get all of this grain during the years of plenty, then during the years of famine. Joseph is now positioned not just to have power, but to have the power to save, to save the people of Egypt, to save other people, including his own family, who in this family, they run out of food. They end up coming. Uh, his brothers come to Egypt. Joseph realizes who they are. Uh, he kind of has some back and forth with them, and eventually reveals himself to them, and they're really afraid. Is Joseph going to punish us? Is he going to kill us? But Joseph forgives them. He, acknowledge, he acknowledges his, their sin against him, but that was all a part of God's greater plan to save his family. And so in this turn of events, now Jacob, his sons, Joseph's brothers, are all moving to Egypt, and Joseph is able to be their savior. As we come into Hebrews 11, we see now Joseph is about to die. And this picture of faith that the author of Hebrews gives us is that even at his death, Joseph is trusting that God is going to take his people out of Egypt back to the promised land to fulfill his purposes. He's looking forward to the Exodus. He doesn't even know what the Exodus is. He doesn't know Moses. He doesn't know what's going to happen. But he is trusting by faith that God is going to fulfill his promise to a people and a place. And he says, hey, when you go, take my bones with you. This is not where I'm going to be buried. I'm going to be buried in the place of promise. So why is Joseph faith exemplary? A couple reasons. One, it's exemplary because he trusted God's promises beyond what his eyes could see. All throughout his story, he had to keep trusting God. And at the end of his story, this example that we find in Hebrews, again, he had no idea how they were going to return from Egypt back to the promised land. But he knew that was God's promise and God would be faithful to his promise. And so he trusted God. Picture of faith. Second, his faith is exemplary because he remained faithful to God in the middle of difficulty and hardship. This isn't a story about someone who had a really plush, posh life uh, who trusted God. No, he went through incredible loss, difficulty, hardship, um, suffering, and he kept trusting God. So his faith grew through the hardship. So what can we take away practically? Well, a few things. First, faith endures through difficulty. It grows stronger. It takes shape. It grows roots. It becomes deeper. We see that in Joseph's life, and we want that for our lives. In James 1, it says, Count it all joy when you go through trials and suffering, for the testing of your faith produces patience, steadfastness, endurance. And that's what we want for us. Faith grows, it endures through difficulty. Second, faith trusts God's promises and his purposes and his providence. Joseph had no idea how all these bad things were going to work out. But he believed that God's plan, his purposes, his providence would come to fruition. And he saw that decades after his trial began. Same thing for us. You might be walking through some really difficult things today. You may not understand why, but you can trust that God knows why and that he's working for his glory and for your good if you're his child. Third, and I think this is just really practical, Faith fuels forgiveness. Faith that's growing in God gives us a willingness and the ability to let go of hurts that have been committed against us. It fuels forgiveness. Joseph forgave his brothers, even though they wronged him. They did nothing to make it back up to them. He saw God's purposes were greater. It freed him to forgive. Faith fuels forgiveness. So those are a few things that we can learn and ask God to uh, work in our lives, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Joseph is a picture, not of, uh, not of the one we are putting our faith in, but a picture of someone whose faith, confident trust, was anchored in God. I pray that yours would grow today as you trust Jesus for what he has done for you and what he is going to do for your good and for his glory. Mm-hmm.